Forget your troubles, come on, get happy. Na -na 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 -na. How you doing, everyone? It's your friendly neighborhood cartoonist. Hi, it's Chris Du from TeamBlockStudio.com, and thank you for tuning in to this lovely Halloween, belated Halloween special. Always belated. Yeah, I didn't do it. I didn't create it on Halloween. And yeah, I'm that guy. I'm just, I guess I'm, that, I'm just that guy. I'm that guy, right? I'm that guy. And this is gonna be a real-time illustration. I'm recording the whole process, from start to finish. So it's gonna be a bit of a long video. It's not gonna be a typical speed video that you're used to me creating. But I will be explaining what I'm doing as well at the same time. So right now, I'm just creating these, using primitive shapes just to scribble and get down the composition, the positioning of all these characters and what's going on. I'm going to explain to you in a sec. Right, so the tall character is Cherry, my character Cherry. And she's kind of like role-playing a witch. Whilst the animal characters, the little critters, make them a bit smaller. Uh, about there. They're going to be um, kind of like brewing in this cauldron, a magic potion to make her broomstick, her Nimbus 2022, to make it fly. They're going to make it flat, apparently. I'll get into the storyline a little bit later on, explain to you what I'm doing. And right now I just want to quickly just sketch around and just scribble this little comp, this composition. And now that I'm done, I'm just going to lower the opacity, make a new layer, and I'm going to dive in and add some facial features and everything and details just to get some visual clarity. How long about how long am I on now? Two minutes to nearly? Two minutes? Okay, so in two minutes we've scribbled out this whole thing. I'm documenting. I want to see how long it takes me to complete this whole thing. So I get a little chin there, let's bring out the jaw. And just gonna have her eyebrows kind of like linear, slight little inner curve. The mouth shape is slightly open because she's kind of like staring at these little critters with a curious expression, but at the same time horrified with the outcome, right? Is it gonna work? If it doesn't work, what's gonna happen kind of thing? So let me tell you a bit about the storyline actually, why not? Let's quickly just do this hat, this witch's hat. I love drawing witch's hats. They're so fascinating to draw. This little buckle. Can you hear the scribbling on my iPad? I hope it doesn't annoy you, it was annoying. Some people find it annoying. I don't mind it, I actually kind of like it. This little white, this is, yeah, I like it. Right, so, Cherry wants to be a witch, and her broomstick doesn't work. So, the little animal characters, being little know-it-alls, right? They know everything, of course. They're little smart Alex, just like human beings. You know, human beings, they, they're experts at everything, right? We're experts at everything. We have an opinion about everything. Let's, let's throw out the window the fact that we might not have experience or knowledge or results in whatever topic we're actually having the audacity to have an opinion about. But we still express our opinions about topics we have no clue about. That's how human beings are. And so are these little critters. So the little smart Alex here, especially the little bunny rabbit, that's the, that's the smartest one at the lot. That's the one that knows everything. He goes to Cherry and says, listen, I'll make your broomstick fly. So they're gonna brew up a potion, a magical potion that will miraculously make this broomstick fly. They're gonna make it fly. That's the whole purpose. I'm just gonna quickly do this little bear. My little bear is now balancing himself, being all silly on top of the broomstick. He's just hanging up there. Why? Because he can. Okay, because he can. He's that guy. He's that guy too, right? <laughs> he, can, he can do whatever he wants. He's the cool one at the look. And uh, I just wanna make him a bit smaller. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Perfect. My little guy. My friend, my buddy, my pal. I just absolutely love this character. And uh, let's do now. Um, what do you call the end of the broom? The brushy part of the broom. There we go. And add some texture. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, let me just get a straight line there. And uh, one more time. There we go. Look at that, right? So my little bear, my little bear character is just hanging up there, and whilst my little cheeky little silly little know-it-all bunny rabbit right here, look at him, he's just gazing up <laughs> at this broomstick, 
all proud of his new creation invention, what he's going to be doing. He's going to turn this into a Nimbus 2022. Yeah, right. Anyway, so it would, be, it would be cool if we had an actual storybook with a bunch of images leading up to this scene so that it can make perfect sense. And then you can also obviously turn the page and find out what happens. But since I'm the creator and I know what's going to happen, I'm that guy, right? Remember that. I'm always that guy. It doesn't work, right? It's an utter failure. They're going to mess it up because this rabbit is so full of sh sugar. <laughs> But there's my little cute little duck. Let me see about the duck. Right, this little duck is inspired by one of my favorite authors, especially as a child. His name is Hans Christian Andersen. Brilliant mind of creating these beautiful fairy tales. And one of them amongst many of my favorites is the ugly duckling. And let's push this up a little bit. Bit higher there and let me just use my liquefier tool to just mend it and then just push up the broom and then just fix it and that is cartoon surgery for you right there so uh, yeah so uh, the ugly duckling was one of my favorite stories amongst many get a cauldron down and also uh, I used to love the cartoons the animated cartoons where they used to make these different versions of the ugly duckling do you remember do you remember the one with that daffy duck when he played the ugly duckling to that with that classical music in the background. Oh, that was so funny. And uh, yeah, so that that story kind of like influenced um, this duck. It's pretty slick cherry here. I bring it closer. There. Okay. Put more in the center. All right. And um, yeah, so that's what he was influenced by. Let's get these little grass and pebbles. And uh, little t-shirts. So he's kind of like a duck that's um, very shy, doesn't have much confidence, but he really, he always hides behind Cherry all the time and stuff. He's a very scaredy cat type of character, but he absolutely adores the guys, the bear and the rabbit. They're like his older brothers in a way. He looks up to them and uh, he's fascinated with their silliness and their confidence. And yeah, that's the story of the little duck. Let's do my little bear. So I finished the illustration. What, how, how are we on time? Seven minutes or so? Okay. Now I'm just gonna go over it and kind of like tighten up the image a little bit. Clean it up a little bit. Still keep that raw, rough feel to the style of the illustration. And um, yeah. Look at that, my little bear. I'm gonna do the leg here. I might actually have the broom just kind of like flaking the edges of it over this leg. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, now let's complete the, let's do the broom or should we go down to the bunny rabbit? Let's do the bunny rabbit, the little smart one. He thinks he knows everything, right? <laughs> He's such a fun character. Wouldn't you just love to just enter your cartoon creations, like enter your image? And just hang out with your characters, your cartoon creatures. Man, I will, I will trade. I will join these characters any given day. Any given, I will choose these characters over human beings any day of the week, hands down. All right, let's do these little arms. Look at his big ass right there. Those bunny rabbits have big butts, so I, I like to have <laughs> I give him a big butt. <laughs> and um, just gonna draw these little glasses, little specks. Just gonna. Zoom in here and just kind of like squash and push them a little bit with the edit tools. Just kind of like scaling it in and out. And use the distort to push it out. Use the warp to push it back in. And voila! And just raise away that part here on the nose so it looks like it's sitting on his snout. Yeah! Perfect! The editing tools are, you know, they're the best. They're the best. I mean, I'm a big fan of Sketchbook Pro on my desktop, on my PC, and one of its flaws is the editing tools that comes with it. It's not as strong as other software, and I feel like the people that work on on these software, they should actually think about that because it is every digital artist's best friend to have the ability to manipulate easily 
your artwork to save time. And um, yeah, Procreate is actually superb when it comes to the editing side and modifying. It saves you so much time. Look at my little duck, isn't he cute? I love this duck. I love ducks. A little duck. And let's get rid of his leg. I didn't like that. So I'm going to add the texture of the broom. Right there, the Nimbus 2022. Okay. So if you're still here, how are we doing on time? 10 minutes? Not bad. Not bad, not bad, not great. It's not bad, it's somewhere in the middle. Okay, now let's take a look at that. Bring back the leg. Okay. Perfect, all right. And now let's uh, go back down here on the duck. Do his little wings, little arms. Just like holding on top, just observing with fascination his friend, his buddy. And um, being all, there we go. I might even draw a pumpkin. You know what, we need a pumpkin. Don't you think we need a pumpkin? We need a pumpkin. I'm gonna draw a pumpkin. You want a pumpkin? I'll give you a pumpkin. I'll give you a pumpkin. I love this little face. Look at that. The rabbit looks so cool. This <laughs> guy's expression, he's so proud. This, this rabbit is so proud of his, of his like experiment right here. <laughs> oh, I wish I had a book about this. I'll make it end. I'll give you a happy ending. <laughs> My fairy tale will have a happy ending. I guarantee you a, a stupid happy ending. So stupid. Right. Let me, let, me, let me just get this line down. There we go. We're going we're gonna to get this, this stick perfectly aligned like that. There we go. Beautiful. Now, if you're still with me, if you're still watching, thank you, first of all still here and if you are let me know if you like these real-time illustrations here versus speed videos if you're anything if you're anything like me because I take drawing and you know learning very seriously so if one of my favorite artists for example if someone I adore their artwork was to come out and say Paris with little bubbles Paris I'm gonna create a video of me drawing and be like, oh yeah cool you got my attention and it's going to be 24 hours long. <laughs> Make it 48 hours, man. Oh, that's, that's like gold to me, you know? The more, the more material, the better for me. So if you're like me, you like, you know, you kind of like take it seriously, then you should obviously be enjoying these real-time videos. But obviously in today's time now with all these new gimmicks that are online like stories and TikToks and twits on Twitter and you know everyone's just swiping and next 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 the attention span is like no more than three seconds now and um so yeah I don't know where everyone is so I don't know which side of the coin you are let me know in the comments super interested to find out but this is like a one-off thing I just wanted to do this I'm in a good mood so I thought I'm gonna do this all right so we've got the glasses there, nicely, perfectly aligned on his face, and... Okay, we're doing good. We're doing good on time as well, 13 minutes. Look at that, we've drawn four characters and a bunch of props. Not bad, not bad for time. Little tail. I might give him a onesie. We'll see, we'll see. All right, let's see what's next. Let's go for Cherry. Hey, Cherry. Cherry. Cherry, baby. All right. Enough of my singing. I know. I'm at my peak. You haven't even heard my peak. I could, I could, yeah, you know. I'm that guy. All right, let me do the eyes. Folds, her little eyebrows. I'm gonna make her eyebrows have a bit of um, a zigzaggy motion to show some sort of distress horror. She's staring at these critters in horror and curiosity, hoping that their madness works, but at the same time, freaking out for the consequence if it does not work. <laughs> I'm actually very tempted to actually make this book just for fun, just for fun. As a PDF and just throw it on my site for free for you all to download and laugh at these characters. And there's nothing better than comedy, right? Nothing better than comedy. I just wanna draw this hair streak now coming down the face. I love that, that looks beautiful. Pretty, very pretty, nice and whimsical. I like that, I like it, I like that. The Cobra Kai, I like that, I like that. You know, 
John Creed. Creed was awesome. All right, got a little shadow on the neck. And um, let's do the bun, the, the ponytail here, the big hump, camel's hump sort of thing. Look at that, it doesn't look like a camel's hump, but I just love the shape. I love that, silhouette. and it's also aligned wrong. So let me just quickly select this whole ponytail, bring it down, it has to be aligned with her back. There we go. Being aware of your mistakes is key. And um, yeah, I'm not fully concentrating since I'm talking at the same time. Let's draw her, let's start with her arm here, all the way down. This one, this one. Hope the noise on my iPad is not annoying you, but I have to kind of like be close to the microphone and to the tablet whilst I'm drawing. Now I'm gonna use the liquify tool and I'm gonna be bending, shaping up those hands because I want them to be kind of like curving outwards like this, kind of like that. Beautiful. See what I mean by editing tools? Why can't all software have these tools? Anyway, let's go down the back here. And all the way down this gown. Actually, I don't really like that. You know what? I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna raise it away. Come back to it in a sec. Let's do underneath here. I'm gonna give her stockings. I'm gonna give her some stockings with some stripes. Watch this, there we go. Look at that, huh? Now I might even give her these little Oompa Loompa sh like little shoes. Little witch's shoes that got like a little curl at the tip of the shoe. Kind of like Santa's little helper elves shoes. A few folds here and there. Okay. How are we doing on time? 16, 17 minutes. All right, not bad. Let's get these shoes in there. Look at that. So let me continue the story of this uh, little image. So I was in a, oh, I was in a store. My mouse broke, so I went to go and buy a new mouse. I went to this like this multi-store where like, you've got everything in there, like from house appliances and TVs and gadgets and toys and computer games and consoles and laptops and whatever you can think of was in there. And um, one sec, let me see that. Okay, that spider needs to be aligned a bit. There we go. Okay, and. Um, there's a book section for books, and I just love books, and I always like to wander in there and see if anything, anything new came out and stuff like that. And then I also like to drift by the aisle for children's illustrated books. I just love looking at the artwork. I love the art style, the children's book art styles, and um, I find it very fascinating, especially the textures and everything. And um, I, I landed on this one book where it was about a witch and these frogs, I mean, I don't know the story, I didn't read it, I just like to gander at, you know, whiz through the, the images and the artwork. It was a beautiful artist, you know, the, the artist was amazing, beautiful work. And I landed this one page, and it was this really tall witch, really thin, tall, long, very long, lanky. And she had this really long, tall hat as well, it made her look a bit more tall. And she was looking inside the cauldron, there was these frogs and everything. And I thought it was really nice, you know, and I thought, okay, maybe I could use this as a reference. And I could mix it up a little bit. The key word is mix it up. And that's where I came up with the idea of trying to make this broom. You mix it up in this cauldron, this magical potion to make it magical and fly. And this rabbit's gonna make this fly. You wanna see this broom fly, it's gonna make it fly. <laughs> kind of thing. Some pumpkin. And that's how I, you know, came up with this illustration of Cherry as a Witch and these little critters experimenting with magic potions on a cauldron. Look at this pumpkin, huh? What do you think, right? Just to raise away the cauldron, the foot's there of the duck. Bring down the opacity, make a new layer. Let's dive in and we just quickly just draw in the details here. Now the other, when, it, when, it when I first uh, bought this iPad, not long after, actually quite long after, about six or seven months after, I landed, um, there was this video that just landed in my feed on YouTube and it was this artist, I don't know who that artist was. Brilliant though, he was a brilliant artist, very talented. He was using an iPad and he had this camera on top of the iPad so you can actually see his hands as well whilst he's drawing. And um, when I'm drawing, well, when I used to draw on this iPad, um, I'm right-handed so I was, I was using, I was doing everything with my right hand. And like, for example, I would draw, I would erase, select brushes, resize brushes, layers, color picking, everything was done with my right hand. And then I was watching this guy, 
and he was also right-handed, but his left hand, which was his free hand, um, it was kind of like hovering on top and he was using his free hand to do everything else besides drawing. So he was using his right hand to draw and everything else was done with his left hand. I was like, whoa, that's actually quite cool. Because I was using my left hand just to hold this, the, the iPad like a sketchbook. And um, let me just erase this, didn't like that. Okay. And um, yeah, so I thought, okay, that's cool. Let me see if I can try this. And obviously I failed for a long time. You need a lot of practice. Let's quickly put this texture here on this cauldron. But after a lot of practice, now, because I'm that guy, of course, right? <laughs> Let's quickly smear this in. There we go. I think I'm gonna darken the edges out. I'm gonna have like shines on the side of the cauldron and then darken it in as it goes towards the center. So let me just quickly darken it here and here. Let me just smear it, blend it in. And let's add some shines. So now with my left hand, it's like I'm playing the piano sort of thing on my iPad, I swear. I'm doing like so many things with my left hand now. I'm using all my fingers and I've got used to it now. It's just now, it's now part of my workflow. So I might make you a bit dizzy. Sometimes I move the canvas around and I'll pinch it and move it and stuff and it might go really, really fast. Um, but yeah, I've gained so much speed because I'm using that free hand. Let's quickly just find the opacity on this layer. I think around there is good. Yeah, let's flatten it. Okay. And we're nearly done, need to do the ground. Yeah, and now I've gained so much speed, but just like, I'm, I'm really playing the piano on this iPad. It's no joke, is that so? It's like my fingers are like tapping everywhere. It's, it's amazing. Let's really just draw this grass. Boom, look at that, huh? We're, we're done with the sketch, this is the final sketch. Just lower this down a little bit and twist it a little bit. There we go. So what we're doing on time, 20 minutes or so? Not bad, for 20 minutes we've done four characters, three props, Oh, and the spider, we've got five characters, huh? Look at that. Not bad, not bad. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this t-shirt because I want to give him a onesie. I think he'll look cool in that onesie. Just do some little scribbles just to show some form. There we go. Okay. It actually looks quite cool. Now his butt needs to go down a little bit. It's poking out too much. So I'm just gonna take my liquify tool and just put it down a little bit like that. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, now let's gonna make a new layer underneath and let's splash some color. I'm gonna select this nice little blue. Big, soft, round brush. All right, now let's make a new layer above that and let's pick some random skin tone. I don't really care what it looks like right now. So I'm just gonna edit it after, play around with the hues. There we go. And um, actually, you know what? Let me give you um, a little tip. I don't know if I can explain it though. Imagine if you draw on the background and you painted the background and you've got your character in there. You want to start painting the character, right? Pick your skin tone, just randomly, as, as accurate as you can be. Just pick, pick a nice skin tone that you think suits your character. Make your brush huge and gently, remember the word gently, right? Just brush over your background. Very, very, very gently though, yeah? Very gently, so you can at least see your background through that brush stroke. And then save that image as a reference and use your color picker, right? Because now that you've got that brush stroke, that gentle brush stroke of your skin tone over the colors of all your background, you're now gonna have a bunch of different tones related to the background because the background's not coming through, it's bleeding through your skin tone that you brushed over. And with your color picker, you can pick different tones to paint your skin. I don't know if that makes any sense. I need to like kind of demonstrate that. I might come back with a tutorial about that. It's actually very, very cool. Very cool technique. I saw someone do this and they were explaining it. I was like, whoa, that is actually really, really cool. And I gave it a try and it's actually beautiful, beautiful. Um, and you, you form like this nice collective group of colors and a lot of color harmony and everything is beautiful and it's related to the background. So you can't really go wrong. Really, really nice technique. I don't know if, you made, if it made sense what I just said. It's kind of hard to explain with words. I need to kind of demonstrate. I'm a guy that likes to demonstrate. So um, maybe I'll come back with another tutorial and show you what I mean. Now I've chosen a grayish blue for the outfit. I'm gonna cover the whole outfit with this color. And what I'm gonna do after that is I'm gonna choose a darker tone 
For example, here under the hat, it should be darker there. I'm not going to be playing around with shadows and tones throughout this image. Just in just little space, you know, little bits and bobs of you know parts of the image where it needs to be there. But I'm not going to go crazy. So let's darken up the whole. There we go. Okay, and here, and here, and here. And... Okay, there we go. Right, Cherry in this image is actually a teenager. I mean, although I draw her as a full grown adult, I also draw her as a child. I sometimes like to draw her as a teenager. And I thought that for this Halloween piece, drawing her as a teenager suits it very well. And on the topic of Cherry, by the way, for those of you out there who have purchased my course on how to draw Cherry, um, I just wanna let you know that I've also updated a chapter in the course for you to go and check out and have fun. Um, if you go to the chapter about facial expressions, I've updated the whole chapter. It's bigger and better and it's, it's awesome. It's a lot of fun. So log into the website, to my website on twoboxstudio.com and um, go to the section about the facial expressions and check it out. And also, there's a bunch of videos. There was a, actually quite a few of them. And also, I updated the video in the course about the S curve and the C curve techniques for, you know, for posing. So um, check those ones out, that video out as well. And soon I will come back and edit, um, not edit, but, um, you know, update the final chapter, the whole section about, you know, putting everything all together and drawing the whole character in multiple poses. All that's going to be updated as well to be better as well, bigger and stronger. You're going to get that free update as well. Also, um, right now I'm working on a course, I'm recreating the whole course on how to draw comic strips. So those of you that have already purchased my course on comic strips, you're gonna get this free update. You're basically gonna, you're gonna own both versions. Um, but yeah, it's gonna be bigger and stronger. I'm also implementing the power of social medias now because um, with social medias, you can now, it's a trend now creating comic strips on there. Where you got this, you know, like for example, on Instagram, you've got the ability to slide, you've got the slideshow, so it's a perfect um, platform for comic strips. So I'm gonna be um, demonstrating that. And also in the course, I'm gonna be demonstrating with two characters. And those two characters are little baby version of me, a <laughs> little baby Paris, and my imaginary little bear character. Uh, my teddy bear becomes real, kind of comes to life in my little imagination, my little fantasy world and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. Very proud of it. And I can't wait to um, share it with everyone. And yeah, once I'm done with that, then I'm just going to go around all my courses and start adding more content, especially to the male character courses. Uh, that's a fun course and I, it, it deserves a lot of extra content and I will, I'm planning to do a lot for that as well. So yeah, stay tuned. I'll keep you all updated. This final image will be on my Instagram account, by the way. So um, if you want to check it out, I'll be uploading it straight after I finish this uh, video and uploaded it. I'll make sure um, so you can go over on Instagram and check it out. And um, yeah, I, I'm, so far I'm very happy. How long are we drawing now? 28 minutes? Not bad, huh? Not bad. Four or five characters, including the spider and a bunch of props. That's not bad. Not bad indeed. But yeah, I'm gonna upload this on Instagram. Check my links in the description, Toonbox Studio. This is such a pretty picture. I'm so proud of it. Oh, you know what, this time next year, I'm definitely gonna print this on a t-shirt. I'm gonna print on a t-shirt and just start walking down the street nice and proud, chest out, and just show it off. <laughs> oh yeah. Right, so let's uh, carry on with this illustration. We're coming to the end now. Oh, also, another thing, another little trick or a little tip I'd like to share uh, what I like to do is um, once I finish my illustrations, once I've got it all drawn up and painted, I like to add on top of the actual final image um, a texture image, all right? And I add these textures on top, and what it does, it gets, it kind of like gets rid of the di digital, digitalized vibe of this um, image, right? And it gives it more of a traditional feel, nice warmth. And it just so looks so good. Now I'm not allowed to share these textures or show it to you, like what they are, what they're called, and stuff like that, because I don't own them. I just got them, took them from Google. But you can find them. There are hundreds, 
seriously hundreds of them. I will demonstrate, I will, show, I will kind of like pause the video, import it in, and then just show you the effect sort of thing. Um, but if you want to find these type of textures, this is what you're going to do. Go on Google, and in the search, I want you to type, for example, grain texture, right? And type after that PNG or transparent. And um, yeah, just download a bunch of them. And also check the related images. You might find something there as well. Another word you can type is grunge. Yeah, the word grunge. And type, you know, texture. Make sure those two are always together. The, the title and the texture plus PNG or transparent. Uh, maybe try um, spackle and spickle and, and um, dust and uh, maybe water paint or paint strokes. Any quirky words, just throw them in there. Like spickle, splat, spack, I don't know, what, whatever word you can think of. And just type them in Google. And once you find them, save them. Make sure they're grayscaled though, yeah? Now, if you don't find a grayscaled one, and make sure also make sure they have to be transparent. Um, if it's not grayscaled, don't worry. Just import it in and then just go to File, Edit and select the section for Hue and Saturation and just drop down the saturation fully so that all you have is a nice grayscaled image of that texture. And then what you do on your layers, just play around with the blend modes and the opacity. Just go through all the blend modes, play around with the opacity of the layer and see what you can come up with. And uh, it, it's a beautiful effect, beautiful effect. It gives you that nice little um, traditional vibe into your drawing. It, it kind of like brings it to life in a little bit in a way. It gets rid of that digital feel. That, that's, that's, how I, that's the best way for me to describe it. it. Gets rid of it. So anyways, uh, let's see what we're doing here with this broomstick. So I'm gonna do a bunch of brush strokes and see if I can get some texture going on. Maybe a bit warmer, brighter as well. Uh, a bit more, might be a bit too much. I might even add a bit of green or blue. Um, and then just play around with the hues after that. All right, it's not bad. Let me just put a bit of blue here and just smear it in like this. Okay. And I'm just going to go and play around with the hues here. And just see what I can come up with. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Now, the outfit for the bear... I just want to splash some blue on it because it's too green. We've got too much green going on. I just want to put a bit of blue, alpha lock it, and just go just a little, little, just a little bit like that. There we go. Yeah, it tones it in a little bit. Better, you know, nice collective uh, set of um, values there as well, naturally. Let me fix the snout. There we go. All right, we're nearly done. All that's left is the ground. So I'm going to choose this nice little muddy green, just kind of like take my round brush and just dab it along like that. Yeah. And let's go for a bit more warmer color, a bit more warmer green, touch of yellow maybe as well. There we go. Very gently like that. And look at that. It looks kind of cool. It's coming alive. Just want to darken up these lines here on the pumpkin for contrast. And any second now, I'm going to pause this recording and come back in a snap. I want to show you the texture. I'm just going to show you the effect, yeah? All right, let's get the hue down. Okay. So, stuck on these lines a little bit. Boom. And now let me show you the... Let's add a bit more yellow here. Just under the foot here, kind of thing. Okay. All right. Coming up to the end. This was fun, so much fun. So here's the texture. Can you see it? Bing, bing, bing. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Let me just quickly add a nice shadow since the, the hat will cast a shadow. I'm using a, a very light purple on a multiplayer, multiply layer with 50% um, opacity. And voila. Check out my final image, my little Halloween special here of Cherry role playing as a witch. And my little critters trying to brew a magical potion to make this Nimbus 2022 fly. Anyways, guys, that's a wrap. I'm Paris Christie from ToonboxStudio.com. Thank you so much for watching. And like always, I'll see you on another video. Bye-bye for now.